Hello, family. Um, good that you are back joining us with our uh, Bible class. Let's go ahead and pray and jump right in. Father God, we are thankful to be able to sit before you right now and to listen to what you will say to us tonight. Bless us as you have been blessing us throughout our lessons. We know that you will do the same tonight. Open our hearts and open our understandings so that we can live out what we will learn. Bless us in Jesus. Amen. So we're going to continue with our series of man-to-man uh, -man relationship, um, the way humanity treats each other, um, having a Christian character, having the God-like character. Um, in relationship with one another, how we treat one another on a daily basis. And um, we've been uh, talking about um, several ones so far, thus far. And last week was an extension of what we talked about two weeks ago. And we've done that before. That's nothing new. Sometimes we do that, uh, helping us to understand a little bit more perfectly the idea of murder from a scriptural perspective and understanding that uh, murder is not only from a physical perspective, but it's also from a, uh, a, a physical perspective, but it's also from a spiritual perspective. And we identify that when certain things uh, reside in our hearts, uh, murder will always take place. So if you want to get that in detail, you can always go back and look at those lessons. But now we're going to go a little bit step further. We're going to go a step further. And as we look at page 32 in our book, um, we're going to talk about you shall not commit adultery from Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 18. So on page um, 32, you shall not commit adultery. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 18. Let's read our passage. Uh, our paragraph, rather, in our book. The seventh commandment prohibited sexual relations between two individuals not married to each other. The Lord intended sex to be enjoyed in the context of trust and commitment within the marriage bond. God's desire for faithfulness in marriage is the same as his own covenant with man. Intimate relationships are based on loyalty between husband and wife. Over time, the devotion produces a comforting sense of security. There's some words here that I underlined that if you want to, or if they could just stick out at you, it's, it's okay. But I underline trust commitment, and marriage bond. I also underlined God's desire for faithfulness in marriage is the same as his own covenant with man. We're going to bring that out in our lesson as we go a little bit further. So, you shall not commit adultery. Let's read that from our literal scripture. You must not be guilty of adultery. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 82. Now, watch the overarching idea, rather, the idea of adultery. Adultery, from the context of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 18, has a Hebrew meaning of, watch it, sexual relations with another man's wife. Watch what I said now. In the context of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 18, because we always have to stay within the context of what scripture is teaching. You never want to go outside of the context. It's just like um, if you're reading a novel. If you're reading a novel, you do not start the novel with your understanding or you do not start the novel smack dab in the middle of the book. You want to get the context of everything that is around the thought. 
So we do the same thing when it comes to reading scripture. So watch the idea now. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, adultery means sexual relations with another man's wife. Now, um, uh, we cannot, we cannot put our 21st century understanding smack dab on the text that was written in Old Testament or Jewish times. We have to get the understanding of what was going on in the mind of a Jew. Now, the broad understanding of adultery is sexual relations outside of your marriage. Now, now that's a broad understanding of adultery, but we have to get the crux of the matter. Deuteronomy says from the Hebrew that uh, adultery is sexual relations with another man's wife. So without being a Bible scholar, without uh, being theologically sound, without having a, a Bible degree, we can deduce, we can conclude, we can draw a conclusion that in the time of Deuteronomy chapter 5, that this had to be going on, that men were sleeping, having sexual relationships with women who were not their wife, but belonged to someone else. Scripture is always situational. Whichever scripture you read, it's always in the context of a specific situation. The, Deuteron the Deuteronomy uh, writer, the writer of Deuteronomy, the person bringing that out, our, our brother Moses, as he's bringing that out to the people who are listening to him, he's not making a blanket statement. This is going on. So the broad term of adultery is sex outside of marriage. That's okay. But the literal understanding is sexual relations with another man's wife, which is prohibited. Now, let's bring that home a little bit more. Sexual relations before marriage is prohibited. Sexual relations outside of your marriage is also prohibited by God. But watch it now. Additions to your marriage is also prohibited by God. Now, when I say additions to your marriage, what am I saying? Bringing people into your bedroom that you are not married to, to partake in the sacred sexual act between you and your spouse. You understand what I'm saying now. Now, uh, uh, that has always taken place. Additions to your marriage, which is prohibited by God, that has always taken place. That's not new. But but with social media and, and a lot of our uh, rap stars, our musicians, not just rap, our musicians, uh, and with social media, it's pushing this idea forward of bringing people into the bedroom as an addition and it being okay. Let me go a step further. I was at work one day and they were having this discussion. I was just standing there listening and uh, they were saying, it's okay to have a little taste on the side. It's okay to bring someone in. And one of the supervisors said, oh, you know, we, we do that, me and my spouse, that's no problem. Well, it may not be a problem to a person who does not believe God, a person that is not following the teaching of God, a person who is not sold out on the characteristics of God, the person who is not following God, yes, that may be okay for you, but it's not okay for a follower of God. Because that's prohibited. Watch what our paragraph says. The Lord intended for sex to be enjoyed in the context of trust and commitment within the marriage bond. 
That's how God did it. Adam and Eve did not know each other until they were married. And that's how God wants it. God, we know God wants it that way because the marriage structure is the first institution of God, even before the church comes. So marriage is sacred in the eyesight of God. And we're going to go a little bit deeper with that. Just stay with me. So watch it now. Adultery, Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, means sexual relations with another man's wife, which is prohibited. And that's obviously outside of your marriage, outside of marriage, because you're doing that with someone else. Perhaps it could be even before marriage, which is prohibited. It can even be in the context of an addition that is prohibited by God. Now, in order for me to get this understanding, watch what I had to do. Um, I had to go and I had to get the Jewish understanding of Deuteronomy chapter 5. Uh, uh, I had to pull out my Pentateuch uh, or my Hebrew Bible or the Septuagint. See, the Septuagint, the Pentateuch, and the Hebrew Bible are synonymous terms. What does Hebrew Bible, Pentateuch, or Septuagint mean? All it means is first five books of the Old Testament. Watch it now. Remember in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1 and following, watch what Paul said to the young man Timothy. He said, and from a child... You have known the Holy Scriptures. Now, what was he talking about? Was he talking about the Bible in its entirety as we have it today? No, he was not talking about that. He was talking about the Pentateuch, the Septuagint, the Hebrew Bible. See, the New Testament could not have been penned yet put together in a binded copy because Paul is living out the New Testament with Timothy as he's talking to him. So he's talking about the Pentateuch. He's talking about the Septuagint or the Hebrew Bible, which means the first five books of the Bible. So I had to go back to my Pentateuch. I had to go to my Septuagint. I had to go to my Hebrew Bible to get the Jewish understanding of Deuteronomy chapter 5. Once again, I cannot take my westernized 21st century culture or even Christian understanding and just place it on the understanding of Deuteronomy chapter 5. I have to understand what they were thinking in that time. Let me give you an illustration with that. Um, when I watch these movies about slavery, I catch myself saying, that couldn't be me. I'm glad the Lord ain't put me in that time because that wouldn't have been me. Yes, it would. You'd have been right there swinging that axe or whatever it was that they were doing or pulling out, uh, uh, pulling that cotton or, or doing whatever it is. You would have been right there, Quentin Patterson. Why? Because that's the understanding of that time. I'm finding myself as a free black man in a westernized culture in the 21st century, placing that on the thinking of a slave in the early 1800s. Can't do that. You got to get their understanding. And it's no different with Deuteronomy chapter 5. You have to get the, the Jewish understanding of Deuteronomy chapter 5. And as I, as I opened up my Hebrew Bible, I saw an immediate conflict. The conflict was this. In our regular scripture, the scripture that we have, the binded copy that we have, as it has been translated, watch this. Verse uh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 is totally different in our translation than it is in the Pentateuch or the Hebrew scriptures or 
the uh, Septuagint. Well, let's read those verses from our regular scripture. And forgive me for using that term, the scripture that we have. Let me read that for you. Verse 16, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you. Then you will live a long life and things will go well for you in the land that the Lord your God is going to give you. Verse 17, you must not murder anyone. Verse 18, you must not be guilty of adultery. Verse 19, you must not steal. Verse 20, you must not tell lies about your neighbor. Verse 21, you must not want to take your neighbor's wife. You must not want to take your neighbor's house or land, his male or his female slaves his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. That's our westernized translation of Deuteronomy chapter 5, 16 to 21. Let me read it for you from the Pentateuch, Septuagint, or the Hebrew scripture. Watch it. Let's start with verse 16. Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God commanded thee, that the days may be long, and that you may go well, it may go well with thee upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth. Verse 17, thou shalt not commit murder, neither, I'm still in verse 17, shalt thou commit adultery. I'm still in verse 17, neither that shalt thou steal. Neither shall you bear false witness against your neighbor. Verse 18, neither thou sh shalt thou covet thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou co uh, desire thy neighbor's house, his field, his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or his donkey or anything that is thy neighbor's. Verse 19, these words the Lord spoke all you, to your assembly in the mountain on the midst in the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness and a great voice and it went out furthermore watch it and he wrote them upon two tables of stone and gave them unto thee do you see verse 19 how it starts in the Pentateuch verse 19 these words the Lord spoke let's look at our westernized scripture in verse 19 you must not steal. Watch it now. What am I trying to get us to understand? Number one, in our study of Scripture, it's okay to read Scripture. But if we call ourselves drawing a conclusion about what Scripture is teaching, we have to go back as far as we can to the original language to get the original meaning because we see from the original scripture that the layout is even different. Got to be careful of that. So I wanted to point that out. And what else are we trying to understand? We have to get into the thought process of the Jew. Now, verse uh, 16, 17, and 18 go into detail more so than our uh, literal translations that we use. Well, what's the point? The point is this. The crux of the matter is covetousness. See, when you have covetous covetousness in your heart, you want what your neighbor has, and you will do anything to get what your neighbor has. Well, watch it. Things are going to manifest themselves. Well, what's going to manifest themselves when you have covetousness in your heart? You'll murder. You'll be guilty of adultery because you'll want the man's wife. Okay, watch it now. You'll steal when covetousness is in your heart. You'll lie about your neighbor when covetousness is in your heart. Uh, 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 you'll want your neighbor's house, his land, his servants, his donkey, everything that belongs to him, you'll want it. And guess what you'll do? Anything to get it. 
So the crux of the matter is covetousness. Now let's go back to our original thought, understanding that covetousness is the crux of the matter. How do we not, in the context of Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, how do we not have sexual relations with our neighbor's wife? How do we not watch the idea? Don't let covetousness reign in your heart and understand that in marriage, that's where God wants you to enjoy sexual relationship. In that oneness. Now, 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 let's go over to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 32. Um, as we're still talking about adultery, remember, adultery is in the context of Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, and also in Matthew chapter 5, verse 32, which is still Old Testament. Don't have a whole bunch of time to go into that. Ah, yes, I do. Because the New Testament doesn't come about until after Jesus dies, and that's the book of Acts. That's when the New Testament comes about. In your scripture where it says New Testament in front of Matthew, that's translated wrong. It should actually be at the beginning of the book of Acts because the New Testament doesn't come about until after Jesus dies. So Matthew chapter 5 is still Old Testament scripture. Adultery in Matthew 5 is the same as adultery in Deuteronomy chapter 5. Let's read what Matthew 5 verse 32 says. And we're going to bring it home. But I tell you, this is Jesus speaking, but I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife forces her to be guilty of adultery. The only reason for a man to divorce his wife is if she has sexual relations with another man. And anyone who marries that divorced woman is guilty of adultery. Well, let's do the math from the text. These men were divorcing their wife for any reason. Jesus said, I'm not going to permit that. So in all actuality, to draw a conclusion, you divorced her, but you're really not divorced because the Lord doesn't look at that as divorce because you're divorcing for any reason, so you're still married. So when you divorce her for any reason, you're pushing her to go and be with another person who sleeps with her, but she's still married to someone else. She's committing adultery. So, and then watch what it says now later on in the passage. Any man, anyone that marries that divorced woman that you put away for any reason is guilty of adultery because he's, still, he's sleeping with a woman or having sexual relations with a woman that doesn't belong to him. The context is the same. It's sexual relations with a woman that is not yours in marriage because God wants sex to be enjoyed in the marriage structure. We see that. Now, let's go a little bit further. Watch what he says, and then we'll be done for, for uh, today. God's desire from our book, God's desire is for faithfulness in marriage. The, for the faithfulness in marriage is the same as his own covenant with man. Now, remember, we understood that covenant, the Jewish idea of covenant, was that relationship that God wanted with his people. We saw that with the Jews, with, with his original people, and it was culminated in Jesus Christ. And God showing how he wants a relationship with his creation through Jesus Christ to be saved. Watch it. God wants to be one with his people, with his creation. That's the overarching idea. Don't miss the point. We're going to do the math from the text. The overarching idea is God wanting relationship with Israel. That's the point of our brother Moses talking about. That's the spiritual understanding. Yes, from a physical sense, you should not be sleeping with another man's wife. That's wrong. But there's a deeper understanding we have to go into. Actually, Moses is teaching through the marriage structure, how God wants to be one with Israel. 
That's the overarching idea. The oneness. Watch it. When man and woman come together, when when Adam and Eve came together, watch it. The, the, the Hebrew word for man is ish. The Hebrew word for woman is isha. Now, from a, from a scriptural understanding, from a theological, theological perspective, it is no coincidence that ish for man and isha for woman in Hebrew are similar, ish and isha. Why? They're similar because when husband and wife come together in the marriage structure, even today, we are showing in marriage how God is one with his creation. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, you don't go outside your marriage and sleep with anyone else. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have sexual relations before you're married because in marriage, when you come together in that perspective, you are showing God's oneness. And that's why you don't bring additions into your marriage in the sexual uh, relationship structure because it's as though you're bringing in another God that you're worshiping and God is jealous over you. He wants a covenant with you. He wants to be one with you. He's showing how God, God is showing how he's one with Israel and he wants us to understand even today. And he wants to be one with us. So, yes, in the marriage structure, it's deeper than just not disrespecting your spouse, even though that's right. Because even when you step out on your marriage, that's disrespecting your spouse. But there's a deeper understanding. When you step out on your spouse, you are breaking the covenant of God and you are not showing the oneness. That God wants to have with his creation. That's the spiritual understanding of Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 18 and not committing adultery. So watch the idea. Uh, counseling a couple right now. That's going to be getting married in the summer. And um, every every couple that I that I counsel and I, and I, I do every couple that I counsel. I start out with one question. Why do you want to marry this person? And I say, wait, don't answer that. I said, do not tell me. This, every counseling session, this is what I do. I say, do not tell me that, oh, I can't live without this person. I can't breathe without you. The sun doesn't rise until I see her face. And, the, and when the rain falls down on my face, it's, it's like refreshing. It's like I'm seeing her or him in the morning. Listen, don't, don't tell me that. Because the sun has been shining before you met that person. The rain has been falling before you met that person. And you were breathing before you met them. So don't tell me you can't live without them. The answer to that question is, God is the center of our marriage. And me marrying this person is pulling me closer to God. <laughs> Brother Patterson, how do I know if I should marry someone? If they're not pulling you closer to God, if, if your relationship with God is going to be strained if you marry someone, then you should marry them. See, it's not about muscles. It's not about height. It's not about color. It's not about money. You know what it's about? Having a deeper relationship with God, even through marriage. Do you see the man-to-man -man relationship there? <laughs> God bless you. Let's pray together. God, strengthen our covenant with you. Outside of marriage, and even more so in the structure of marriage. Let it be so. In Jesus, amen. Be a blessing, ladies and gentlemen.